Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Progressive Astrology Light of Valencia channel. We begin the new season today, we'll speak as I said about recalibration series in the new energies of the planet we are right now. Because every ascendant, every nakshatra, every one of the 27 constellations, every one of the 12 zodiac houses of the sun must undergo a different kind of recalibration. That's the new energy that the planet sits in right now. It has to be completely different to whatever has been played out in the past. How does that happen? Well, first of all, we got to recalibrate our understanding of the self and our understanding of planets and the energies and guide ourselves into what is the higher possibility here. Because remember, we are always talking about expansion. It's the expansion of the idea into something that has a higher evolution potential for us as humanity. And as individuals, so today we'll speak about something which I will call recalibration of Mars. So this is the first one. We'll go through every one of them one by one, one a day. This is recalibration of Mars, the first ascendant sign. So we are talking about basically about Aries and now f- number one, number one, the first sign of the zodiac. Aries and number 8 Scorpio which is Mars co-ruled by Ketu and Pluto on the south node of the moon and Pluto so Mars what do I mean by recalibration of Mars traditionally Mars is explored and understood as the warrior in Vedic texts even as the most violent one or in a sense the one who has all the drive and aggression to go out there or go inwards and get something okay so what does it mean to say recalibration of Mars well what happens in the new energies with this Mars well in the new energies the Mars becomes more of a drive to go and get something from a higher perspective. Now one of the things that Mars is a karka of or the doership of is a fourth house. This is crucial because it lands in the kendra or the foundation of the human being. One of the things that Mars wants us to drives each one of us to get is a territory is a boundary, is an is a home, is a country. Mars is also the soldier. You defend there is a boundary line. You defend that boundary line. You call that this is part of land or this piece of real estate or this piece of uh, thing that I possess is mine and I will do everything in my power to protect this territory or this country or this region or this house or this home and family. So Mars is this great protector energy that we all have which tends to defend and it will go to all lengths of violence, all lengths of wars that we have had in all the past denser parts of humanity's existence here, tribes warring with one another. You know, you you may have heard stories about all the past times when even when we were small tribes living in Africa, when one tribe goes, explodes, tries to go explore another part of the land and comes across another tribe, first thing what you do, the very first reaction, you know that, you've all been there, I've been there, you've been there. First thing you think is, well, why has this person come here? I have to defend my land. I have to defend this territory. Well, first of all, understand that this particular Martian energy comes to each one of us from the animal instinct. You see, animals and even birds are very, very territorial, right? It doesn't belong to the plant kingdom. Plants can grow, creep around each other. They all grow, flourish together in the same piece of real estate. They don't fight for territory. The fighting for territory comes with the animal kingdom. 
there is something in the DNA that will make you fight for territory. Dr. Carl Sagan published a book called The Dragons of Eden in which he describes the reptilian brain as a part of the reptilian brain which will fight for territory. If you come to a particular animal's territory, let's say the most common example we all know of as dogs. <coughs> now you can see a whole pack of dogs if they are in one particular place. If another pack of dog comes, they will bark, they will shoo them off. This is my territory, don't invade it. That's the protection of territory. That's the energy of Mars. One of the main drivers of Mars which activates Mars even in any chart is the protection of the territory where it sits in, the house it sits in. So in the new energies what will happen to this Mars? In this new energy the Mars people, the Aries and Scorpio ascendants particularly because they are being driven in their head from Mars energy. They need to expand this sense of territory to encompass a broader perspective. Instead of thinking my house, they can think of my street or my city. That's expansion of the sense of territory. Remember we are talking about expansion. So the Mars will tend to expand its sense of territory. This is not just my house, the ones who are thinking in terms of maybe probably the Rakshasa Ganas, they always think in very limited terms, I, me, myself. So if your ascendant is very much focused on Rakshasakana kind of things, you will think in very selfish terms. You cannot think beyond the boundaries of the little ego. So you will think in terms of house. You will be the defender of your house. You will say, this is my house. Nobody step into my house or I will get violent. I will get aggressive, physically aggressive with you. Or don't touch my people in love. My family, guardian of the family. This is all my family. This is my spouse, this are my children. This is my dog or cat and I'll defend to death. That's the territorial instinct. Understand the instinct is an animal instinct. As human, we have come to try to transcend the animal instincts. Take it to a higher level, take it to a higher meaning, make it more expansive. If you are just defending your home, your country, if you are just defending your home, expand it to the city, expand it to the street even. Think of the entire street as your home and bring the same level of energy to that. If you are a soldier of a country, expand. that's already an expansion. I am defending this entire country. Well, if you are a soldier of a country, defend the whole planet. Say, this whole earth belongs to me. What belongs to you really? The belonging sense and the territorial sense is the is the kshetra or it's the part where Mars plays the maximum role. It's the guardian of the fourth house. The fourth house stands for home and family. This is why people who have good strong Mars in their chart have lavish homes for example or if they are passing a good period of Mars they will get homes they will buy real estate property this is why so much of real estate or estate and buying homes is such a big part of human existence and there are so many bankers and so many people who will take advantage of this natural instinct of humans to have a home well, physically a home is just a house or a villa or a ranch or whatever piece of thing you call earth that you feel that you are owning. You don't own anything here. Nobody owns anything here. We are part of a system called earth. So in the new energies, the Mars has to expand to fill the real estate to the entire planet. That's the recalibration of Mars. If the whole planet is your home, your whole approach is going to be very different, isn't it? It's the approach you take. Mars is going to provide you the energy anyway. It just remains to be seen what the individual will start considering as the territory which I am about to defend. Remember, the instinct is there. The instinct is not going anywhere anytime soon. We are built like that. We are built from the animal instincts ground up. So we are going to take this energy and we are going to bring this or teach this even to our children, even to the young generation 
my hope is the astrologers out there will take this kind of an approach and say for Aries and Scorpio listeners, look you are very territorial you have got a strong drive to achieve whatever depending upon wherever the mass is placed according to if you plot the Vedic style of charts and you see mass placed in some house in some constellation or nakshatra if we should guide them this is more about guiding them the evolutionary astrology which I speak of in these podcasts is more about guiding and knowing a person where they are not roaming around like headless chickens like we spoke of so many times before so recalibration of mass you should teach the Aryan and the Scorpio ascendants expand your sense of territory your territory is not just your home or your piece of real estate or your piece of country or state or whatever it is it is this entire earth treat the entire earth as your territory because expansion can go more levels than that also you can even make the whole solar system or the whole galaxy but baby steps here first expand the sense of the territory which the Mars is the lord of the territory who becomes a soldier and gets all the weapons from under the bag and from their holsters and spears and what not to defend that territory the aggression of Mars comes from the need to defend something in Sanskrit it's also called as Kshetra or the boundary the boundary which Mars assumes is this it may not be necessarily personal boundary sometimes it can be personal boundaries as well if somebody is being abusive to you if somebody is being physically, mentally, emotionally abusive to you then Mars will kick in they will go violent why? because the sense that is being perceived is the sense of territory being invaded you are trying to come into something which I call my private space and you are not welcome is that kind of an energy right so this is where Mars predominantly plays a role think of this. these things need very deep reflection because they go in all possible directions the instinct comes from the animal kingdom not the plant and the elementals remember they go everywhere in the earth the air, wind, fire, water they all are elementals they just provide the foundation in which we act the plants and they don't have any uh, Martian energy to them they just exist they are just welcoming every creeper you can see go to a forest and see a creeper 101 kinds of creepers ferns mushrooms all are intertwined all are working with one another so their territories are very open they don't have a Martian kind of guard there this is why everybody feels very welcome in nature in forest in in the mountains lakes in the ocean because they don't have a territorial boundary to them but when you come across other animals birds or um, human beings you immediately pick up the sense of territory this don't come here or don't come and speak to me this is my boundary that is your boundary this is my piece of real estate or a village or city that is your city this is my state that is your state this is my country this is my your country this is my flag the loyalty to the flag that we have going around our coat of arms or any number of these things I'm just sharing with you the energy of Mars where it comes from so that when you see an Aries or a Scorpio ascendant or you see the Mars in a person's chart do you know the right thing to do the first step is education folks you got to see it in the right perspective if you see it in the right perspective you can guide the person better they have more awareness this new energy provides all the fuel for every single soul now and who are coming in to be guided the proper way the astrologers who are looking at this material please take note of this and guide properly about what is Mars don't just say Mars is the violent one or Mars is the aggressor or you are going to get angry at something well why do you get angry at anything the territorial nature of Mars comes into picture it is just a guard standing at the door he is not interested in possessing the property he is interested in guarding the property 
It's the guard at the door. It's the soldier at the gates of the city. He's just guarding the city and that's all he does. Mars does not have a sense of possession. He's just pure fire. So Mars has the fire which needs to do something. It needs to produce work. Fire wants to produce energy. So this fiery energy of Mars shows up in Aries as individual fire which you spoke of earlier and in Scorpio as the still water which, which goes underneath. One is a water sign, one is a fire sign. So you can take it to all levels and see how all these Mars energies will play out in these two very different faces of Mars. If you don't know what I'm talking about, faces of Mars, look at my look up the podcast of the two faces of Mars. The two faces of every planet I have given in previous ones. This will tie very nicely into all, all these series. Okay. Well, I've spoken enough for 15-16 minutes. Okay. I'll leave you with this to reflect, ponder and use in your chart readings as and when you see fit. Have a nice day and be safe.